You're such an asshole. Hello everybody, the old Capmeister here. We had a, uh, I had to do a lot of research on this one and this guy paid. Um, but if any one of our Canadian friends can help him, I did a ton of research calling different, uh, he wants to get into uh, welding up in Canada. He's moving, you'll hear the story later. Um, and I've done my research, you know, called the, the um, what was it, the Alberta, whatever Alberta's regulatory authority is on allowing foreign welders to come to Canada. There's a website on Canada, Immigration for Welders. Um, but I know that's how the stated rules and laws are. I also know that when the McMurray uh, oil fields are booming, uh, there might be more personal and networking ways to land or find somebody a job. And uh, you guys might be able to pull some strings. Or for those of you in the welding world of Canada, you might be able to help this young man uh, beyond what my research says. Uh, the young man writes, Dear Mr. Cleary, I married a Canadian gal two months ago. I'm in the process of immigrating. The process should take up to a year from now. I'm 40 years old with a high school diploma. I've wor worked in a shipping warehouse for the last 10 years. I want to change jobs and you've got me interested in the trade, specifically welding because I like working with my hands. How do my prospects for changing jobs at my age look? They look fine as long as you can stay in shape. That's the thing is, you know, it's, it's not it's not your age. It's can you can you bend over? Can you lean over? It's it's, it's not. You're not hauling concrete, but it's it's somewhat physically demanding. You're not taking dictation either. You're not serving espresso as a barista. Oh my goodness. Um, and they 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 look more promising than you going back to get your MBA. I'll tell you that. Uh, but it's you know as long as you're in physical shape, it should be all right. Plus, how in demand are the trades in Canada? Uh, quite high actually. And what is your opinion of Canada's economic future? Please keep my name private. I'd enjoy watching a video about this. All right, so I went and thought it through and organized my thoughts and answers into the following. We're first going to take a macroeconomic view of Canada, see where it looks like nationally. Then we're going to look at the provincial view, specifically as it pertains to welding. Then I'm going to go through the education and regulatory BS, and what I'm going to do then after that is provide you some links later. I'm not, I, I, I'll just, well, maybe I'll put them up on the, the comments, but I'm going to email them to you regardless. Uh, and then I'll just meander and give you some overall general advice from what I found. All right, so macroeconomic view. Um, Canada's economy it parallels the United States. At one time, they were growing much faster than they are today. Economic growth has slowed. They're in the 3Z, 4Z percents back in those evil, racist, and sexist 50s and 60s. And now they get really excited. They're, you know, 4, 4 and a quarter percent like us. And now they're excited when their economy grows more than one and a half. Um, so it's this general decay and decline that's been happening. Uh, it has uh, several main industries, prominent of which is your mining and oil. I think that is their single largest non-public sector entity followed by um, general manufacturing. Housing is huge over there because they got a housing boom. A lot of the Chinese foreign investment is coming in. Um, what else? Uh, uh, agriculture, specifically timber and lumber. Um, and then they do have a, a sizable non-oil and gas manufacturing industry. Uh, and then as you'd guess, their energy industry, whether it's mining for coal or even precious metals, one could say, uh, or oil is highly dependent on commodity prices and the health of the global economy. Uh, more recently, the oil and mining sector took a, they were contracting about three and a quarter, uh, four percent uh, back 2014, 2015 when the price of oil was going down. Same thing as the Bakken oil field collapsed, so did Canada's McMurray field, and that's their oil. Uh, but now with the oil has gone up from, depending on what do you want Brent crude, uh, Texas light, whatever? It, it depends on what oil, the type of oil you want to measure. But uh, ever so roughly, oil prices have gone from the high 20s to the mid 50s. So that increase in the oil price um, has also made more wells and more oil plays profitable once again. So the oil industry has had a little bit of a boom, a uh, resurgence. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, now, the past year, Canada did have quite a booming economy. They, they made it almost 4%. They did. They were making, and I was looking at the figures. I'm like, why are they celebrating this? This is like, and they measure it in either quarterly. They don't annualize their data quarterly or monthly. 
I'm like, just be like us Americans and, and do it quarterly annualized. So we are all playing with the same apples here. Uh, but they were having for today's standards, you know, the lowered standards that we just lower standards for all of humanity. Yeah, they've been growing by leaps and bounds. I think the fastest growing economy um, in the OECD, and maybe not the OECD, but the, the G7 or the G6 or whatever. G8, I don't know. We keep kicking people on, taking people in. Uh, so Canada has had some impressive growth in the past year. Uh, unfortunately, this past quarter, it went down to zero. Now, a lot of that was expected to be scaled back. So that has to do with uh, when you're ramping up oil production, a lot of GDP is produced, but once you get, you know, you, you put in new pipe or you set up a new platform, that initial investment is done and over and then you just start pumping it out. Uh, housing has kind of taken a, a, a slowdown uh, because I believe Canada was implementing like, hey, hey, no more of you foreigners coming in here and jacking up our property taxes with your Chinese money. So that kind of... So then they said, they just generally said automobile production. Now, I wouldn't worry about these fluctuations. I would not worry, oh my gosh, it, it went down to 0%. It's like, yeah, you're going to have a bad quarter every once in a while. Um, but it shows you once again how kind of dependent they are on international force. I mean, we're their largest trading partner. Whatever the United States does, they're going to do. Uh, but just to give you an idea, yeah, things were really good for the past year. But if you look at the longitudinal economic growth, of Canada, going back, the oldest one I could find was 1961 to 2017. It's it's the exact same thing. It's very volatile, but it's higher economic growth. But if you look at its overall trend, it's going down, and we're just they're going to slowly decay like Europe. They just elected Justin Trudeau. Um, <clears throat> politically, they want equality instead of excellence. Uh, they want all the immigration in the world. They don't care if these are doctors or surgeons or engineers. They're bringing in. They'll just take anybody to live on welfare. Uh, so my opinion of Canada's long-term economic growth would be that of the United States or Europe in general. It's We're still number one because we're relatively uncorrupt. I mean, in general, the West, I mean, everyone worries about China growing and Russia and all this. They're horrendously corrupt. Um, and having an uncorrupt society leads to people having trust in your economy, your currency. You may not be booming, uh, but we'll be able to hold it out for a while. We'll be able to like keep the lights on. So it'll just be this nice, slow, general decay. And you know, who, who knows, like 20, 30 years from now, people will be excited if we make 1% GDP growth. Yay! <laughs> so that's uh, the thing. Um, just a couple other notes here. Uh, pertaining to welding, keep in mind, uh, you're going to have several industries that you're likely employed in. Uh, shipping, uh, building ships over in Halifax would be more on the... Uh, east side of Canada. Vancouver's a housing boom, Toronto, all those other, but again, housing goes like that. Uh, but your main employer, your largest uh, potential for profit and opportunity will be in mining and oil. Um, now, some of that's coming under threat. Uh, very recently, uh, TransCanada, is it TransCanada, they had a pipeline they were going uh, to build called the Energy East Pipeline. And uh, here, here's what shows you, this is why you go do sovereign risk analysis when you elect a socialist and a communist in. Uh, oh, they're so environmentally friendly. Uh, Trudeau, they changed the, 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 the Trans-Canada was going to build this pipeline. I think it was 20, no, 16, $16 billion, uh, which is huge in Canada. It's like a full point of GDP. Uh, they're going to build this big pipeline, and it would have caused a lot of jobs. But then the Trudeau government and their environmental regulator, they kept changing what the company would have to do to get permission. And inevitably, they said, you know, we've thrown so much money into getting this stuff approved, and now you keep changing the rules on us. We're not doing it anymore. And the people are like, oh, my God. Da, da, da. And then Trudeau was probably going, ha, 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 because, you know, let's just stop big oil. We don't want jobs. And frankly, the western provinces don't matter to the eastern ones, where the government in Quebec and Ottawa and the uh, Quebec is the French, uh, they really just parasite off of the uh, western provinces. Quite literally, they have to send uh, energy money <laughs> back to the eastern provinces. Uh, but Trudeau, I bet then again, Trudeau, is, is, it's not like he's an ideologue, he, uh, he's a danger to the long-term economic growth, especially in the oil and welders, but no matter how much they try to get rid of cars, people still demand cars, and so there's still this underlying demand for oil, energy, gas. Uh, and it shows in the wage data that we'll get to later about welders and specifically where in Canada 
welders are paid the most. Uh, the larger point is, as Canada moves back to the left, uh, and they elect their George Bush, a uh, nepotistic little pansified piece of fuck, uh, and he goes and he jerks off and masturbates because he stopped big oil, and they're going to stick it to the oil companies. Uh, that that is going to put a, a cap at least the growth in uh, oil. It's not going to. It won't boom. I know they think four percent is booming. That's not a boom. Go to the early '80s during uh, uh, Rinaldus Maximus in the United States. You'll see a boom. Um, but uh, anyway, just just to let you know, there's that political risk of uh, the Canadian commies. Uh, electing the likes of Trudeau and in their provincial and, and local governments. Uh, very much like the United States, they got a debt to GDP of 116%. United States is at 125 This is according to the OECD. I know a lot of you, are, when you do international comparisons, you want to use the same measuring stick. So I know some people say, it's only on 105. We're over on the Fred database. It says, yes, I'm aware of it. I'm trying to keep apples with apples. Um, and, it's, and it's kind of the same thing as the United States. We're becoming, they are becoming, we, United States of Canada, are becoming weaker and weaker and more inferior people. We want more government to take care of us. We've abandoned fiscal responsibility um, in Canada. Now, Harper kept things a little bit under, he, he had a, a little bit more of a balanced budget. Uh, Trudeau's come in, although he's certainly benefited from that last year of economic growth. Their, their um, deficits as a percentage of GDP are down to 2%. United States is between three and four, depending on what 2017 inevitably closes as. Uh, but they're an indebted nation. They they bleed more than they produce. They it's laziness and sloth. It you're not. It's you know we were excited about Obama. Their young people are excited about Trudeau. Women are playing make believe work jobs as they work in nonprofit and make work and no one's really busting ass. And there's just no there's no. There's no, um, I don't want to say soul, but there's no fighting spirit left. There's no more desire to achieve excellence. This is a country on, they're, up, they're coasting now, a lot of which is, is financed by the, the natural resources they have in the western provinces. But don't expect to go there and like maybe be at Switzerland or Singapore or even Hong Kong where there's hustle and bustle and there's like an element of national pride and yeah, let's kick ass and let's take, na it's not there. It's, oh, we're guilty people, oh, you know, it's... It's the United States, it's just colder. Um, about the only real difference I'd say between Canada and the United States, Canada is, is more lazy. It's because of their uh, Trudeau's father back in the olden days. Um, their unemployment rate harmonized. Uh, it was a high of about 8% back at the peak of the recession. Now it's down to the low sixes. By comparison, the United States still has a little bit of a harder work ethic. We're just a better people, I'd have to say. And I'm, I'm being deadly serious. I know there's some good Canadians, don't worry. But I'm saying on the whole, sorry, United States works better. It's why we make more money per capita. Still, still, despite having Obama, we still came out ahead. We're still better. Monetarily, I'm not talking morally. Uh, but we got an unemployment rate of 4%. Um, and it's kind of been always like that. They, you know, like, oh my God, I'm gonna have free everything. And, uh, so that's it. So that's kind of the. It's not too unlike here, you know, under Obama. Like, ah, uh, you got a leftist president who's against uh, industrialization. You know what? Obama wanted to put a, a a kink into the Keystone. Trudeau put a kink into this Energy East pipeline. We want to make everything free. Let's have everybody from all the world come in here. We believe in magic dirt theory. Everybody young, you're going to be in the eastern provinces, you're going to be in the what's called the Horseshoe area. Um, they're all those good eastern Canadians. They just think they're so smart and intelligent by saying, we need other people's money. And that's all they know how to say. Yeah, so I've, I decided it's going to be colder, but I don't know if there'll be that much of a difference in cultural shock. And the economy and the outlook is still going to be about what it would be here in the United States. We don't know what it is going forward. Of course, we can't predict the future. Maybe Trump gets this tax thing in, and maybe, 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 maybe. But on the whole, when you look at Canadians and Americans, today, modern one, not earlier ones, not the World War II ones, not the pioneers, today's millennial, Gen X, Gen Z coming online, baby boomer fucks, we're both pretty pathetic people and you can expect the pathetic growth, uh, uh, results where we're excited about a 4% growth rate. All right, now, provincial. The problem with the industry you want to go into is that it's, it's highly location dependent. Uh, and you're going to go into Ontario 
And Ontario uh, is uh, GDP wise or provincial domestic product wise, it's the largest economy out of all the provinces. Uh, and it accounts for 38% GDP. Uh, now, it's also very diversified. And so you think, oh, Ontario is the largest economy, regional economy, so I should be able to find jobs there. Well, there's, there's the problem. <laughs> yeah, Ontario's got industry and diversified industry. It's not as susceptible to changes in energy prices globally as, say, Alberta or Saskatchewan or British Columbia. <clears throat> but since it's so heavily populated and everyone wants to live there, that's where, you know, I don't think the, yeah, I think the majority of the popular, the plurality of the population is there. Um, you also have an increased supply of labor, all right? So yeah, there may be more welding jobs in Ontario and Kit Kitchener's where you want to live. Kirchner, whatever, it's outside of Waterloo down there in that horseshoe area. So there's probably many different types of welding jobs but there's also a lot more welders in those neighborhoods because wifey poo has to live in toronto and drive her suvs you guys drive range rovers in the what's what's the range rover equivalent in canada like the gal that goes to her coffee shop and get her thingies done say, oh my god husband go work i like i like i like here i like the travel but i like it here whatever it, soccer moms you know or hockey moms i don't know what you guys do. uh but uh, if you're willing to travel and go to where most people don't want to go, yeah, I think Alberta, I was surprised to find this out, Al Alberta is only like 13% or somewhat, don't quote me on that, I, I thought it'd be a little bit larger because of all the oil, but Alberta does not account for a very sizable percentage of Canadian GDP, but there's so much fewer people there and so few people want to go up to the Edmonton or the Fort McMurray fields, the oil fields, uh, that there's this larger demand for job and this limited supply of labor. So uh, you got basically three general areas. Now, don't say I have to move to these three areas, but you can really boost your pay as a welder if you're willing to just go to where the jobs are and the weather fucking sucks even more than it normally does in Canada. Like, Canada's pretty sucky weather, but we got these spots that are really fucking sucky. And if you're, if you're willing to go to the RFS, the really fucking sucky parts of Canada, you can make some damn good money as a welder. Right? But, in general, ever so general, East Coast, uh, Fal uh, Halifax, that's the shipping in, uh, industry, all right? So you can work on ships and whatever other associated uh, industry that would demand welders in there. Uh, then you have, in, in the middle, uh, not so much Saskatchewan, but more Alberta, particularly the McMurray oil fields. You have uh, the oil industry and the mining industry. British Columbia, a little bit more mining and, and, and forestry and all that. But then in Vancouver and Toronto and Ottawa, oh my God, oh, it's just fabulous. Look, we have shiny buildings. Uh, if there's a housing boom going on, somewhat that can be related as well, but not as good as being a welder in the shipyards or anywhere near as good as working uh, uh, up in the oil fields. Or if you can get the job, because the pipeline in theory would across many provinces, if you can get working for a company up there, they say, hey, we got, we're going to transfer you all down to this pipeline uh, down in southern Saskatchewan where it only gets down to minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever that is, Celsius. So to give you the math, I looked up some of the different ones, the main, I didn't really look at territories, uh, but to give you an idea of what a welder, average pay welder does based on Indeed.com, Alberta, $33 an hour, Ontario, $1981 an hour. New Brunswick, $24.97. Quebec, $19.67. Nova Scotia, uh, $24.35. British Columbia, $28.91. Saskatchewan, $30.32. Uh, and then if we go to like specific towns, <coughs> Halifax, Nova Scotia, $25.27. Uh, your town you're moving to, Kirchner, Ontario, $18.70. So like, you know, where all the population centers are, the, the demand isn't that good. And then for McMurray, uh, $40.92. That's the highest one um, there. Um, so what, what you're going to want to do, if you can, if Wifey Poo lets you, uh, you would go, it, it's the old school, go work in the fields. You do your, your six weeks on, your two weeks off, or you do two weeks on, two weeks off, however they do it. Uh, you go up there and summer, shoot, go up there in winter. I got a buddy, Hope the Hill, I, uh, he ran for the Libertarian Party up north. Way north. 
uh, he could totally, because he sent me pictures of like minus 60 degrees over in Fort McMurray. I'm like, it just looks like hell. Oh, it looked like hell, but that's why you're making all the extra money. So he'll, hopefully he'll give me an email. I'll, find, I'll hunt him down or have, he'll assume, shoot me an email and um, make some comments down below. And I hope some other roughnecks will, will also mention that. Uh, but that's that's what I would do. Your wifey poo is just going to have to, you know, dear, that's where the money is. Or you could stay in, in uh, Ontario and it's it's just kind of more or less a low-level trade. I'm not saying it, it itself is a low-level trade, but based on wage, it's $18.70 an hour. Hell, down here in the United States, you, babysitters can make $20 an hour if they good and they show up on time. All right? But... Uh, yeah, it's 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 not that great a pay, so you're gonna have to start looking about. Yeah, do you want to go and be a roughneck somewhere? All right, uh, the final key to this variable, your problem or this equation, is the education. And right now you're working. I said, well, you are you in, in training? I'm like, no. All right? And this is gonna be the largest monkey wrench in your plan. Uh, and that is, you can't just go up to Canada like, hey, I'd like to weld. Uh, you got to go up there with a certification and a skill. Now, if you're willing to go and get educated in Canada, that's fine, you know, like, okay, down the road. At which point, I can't guarantee you what the, the future of the Canadian economy will look like. I still think because the world demands it, you're going to have higher wages in the trades and the engineering than you will finger up the ass liberal arts. Let's go act like we're leaders in fucking Quebec. Um, but... Uh, so I, I don't think it was it will be a bad investment if you went up there to trade school. But ideally, if you got the time, go to trade school now, get a trade, or at least get your certification, because it's going to make things easier when you get to Canada. Right? Now, there's some problems, though there's still some hurdles. Like, okay, fine, you go up to Canada. Um, it depends on the province, but uh, the requirements are basically all the same. Uh, the union is the same. Now write this down. Holy cow, their business cards must be this big. The certificate, no. The International Brotherhood Boilermakers, Iron Shop Builders, Blacksmith, Forgers, and Helpers. That's the union you want to gonna hook up it. Whether you're in Canada or now, matter of fact, the fir one of the first things I do is I go talk to the guys at your local. I called the, their national line because I... That was... <laughs> Oh, you got to talk to Bob. Who the fuck is Bob? Oh, he's over at that one. You have to call. Hey, Bob. Oh, no, you got to talk to Jim. I'm like, okay, fuck you guys. But uh, I finally did get a hold of a nice lady, and she said to talk to your local uh, union of the International Brotherhood Boiler Makers, Iron Ship Builders, Blacksmith, Forgers, and Helpers. The... Yes, that, that group. Um, anyway, without going too much on an astray, uh, what I would recommend, you see, you don't have a certification, you have no education now. Get into a welding program now, here in the United States, if you have the time. I know you said you're busy, you don't have time, it was, it's going to go a long way if you can help that now, because they sometimes have reciprocity arrangements, okay, you got to take a test up there, instead of like going and getting re taking the whole class all over again you go to an accredited school here all right there's some shifty shady fly-by-night type of trade schools welding schools down here um I'm, and one of the links i'm going to put in there is um about finding a um a, a good trade uh, welding school but the general rule is if it says yeah we can teach you in eight to twelve weeks no 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 like if it's three months no uh the guy's article that i was reading he's like six to 18 months and with maybe some specialization and then the other problem you're going to face is experience and this is this is twofold all right one this is according to the albertan regulatory authority i forget their official name they're in edmonton this lady was very nice on the phone so not only do you have to have like your your certification uh you need 7020 hours of actual experience Oh, no, you need both 7,020 hours of experience and 54 months of experience. So that's, uh, what is that, four? Is it three and a half years? What's 54 divided by 12? Yeah, four and a half years. So, again, if you could start now, that's going to 
get the clock to go back a little bit in time. Um, when you go up there, uh, don't quote me on this, you have to take a practicum test of $160. Now, keep in mind, this is Canadian, so that's like 33 cents. It's not that. I know these are in the... I'm kidding! I'm kidding! Like It's 70 cents or 80 cents on the desk. 75 cents, so this is like 120. Canadians are so cute with their loony currency. Oh. It's like ours. It was one time under Steve Harbour. It was on parody, but no more. Uh, and then there is a um, qualification program you have to sit for, and that's $450. You got to score 70% or higher, recognize it off Canada. So if you pass that, you get that. So that's one set of requirements. The other set is through the actual um, Welding Immigration Authority here. And this is also be one of the links I provide in here. <clears throat> Immigration.ca, C-A slash welder slash. Uh, okay, here are the requirements. <clears throat> now, you won't have to worry about the immigration aspect because you're going in with your wife, but um, this is for getting, under, getting qualified under this welding program. Two years minimum of relevant experience. See, so you're going to, by that time, you, you might be up there already. All right? But if you could start now, you're getting ahead. Must have good English or French language skills. That's good. You must be a test drug flea. You must have a drug free. You must have a clean police record during the past five years, excluding speeding offenses. If you meet the above minimum, you must have experience carrying out the following, the majority of the following duties. And they go through all this stuff, and this sounds like <clears throat> real stuff. Operate manual or semi automatic welding equipment to fuse metal segments using, using processes such as gas, tungsten, arc. Gas metal arc, flux cord arc, plasma arc, shielded metal arc, oxyacetylene, resistance welding, and submerged arc welding. Operate manual semi-automatic flame cutting equipment. Operate brazing and soldering equipment. Operate metal shaping machines such as brakes, shears, and other metal straightening and bending machines. Repair worn parts of metal. Da, da, da. And if the list goes on, you could read it yourself. But they're not just like letting anybody in. Okay? So there is a significant amount <clears throat> of educational and um, experience requirements uh, before you could emigrate on your own there. Uh, but certainly, uh, even though that's for foreigners coming into Canada, um, it's it, these are still going to be some requirements when you live there. All right. So you probably you might have to apprentice while you're up in Canada. Again, go talk to the union. Go talk to the. <clears throat> International Brotherhood of Boilermakers, Iron Shop Builders, Blacksmith Forgers, and Helpers. Go talk to those guys at the local. They'll call the Canadian buddies. Hey, hey, we got... And then, and I'll kind of get into this a little bit later, then you've got a buddy-buddy system. This is where the union actually comes to help people before they destroy the economy. Um, so, what are the solutions here? Aside from you going to welding school, finding a good quality welding school, going there now. All right. Two main routes we're going to go there. You're not going to meet these requirements by the time of the year that you're there. All right? it's, it's just not going to happen. And you're going to have to go and you know, take a lot of other classes and get some experience and apprenticeship and all that other stuff. But what I think is possible in your case, especially given the demands for welders in, in these far remote places, is that through one of two networks, if you could get certified here in the United States, you know, or get your you pass, they might be able to land you a job as a low-level welder without having to meet all these requirements. Because I don't know where you're going to get four and a half experience in the next year, four and a half years experience. I don't know where you're going to come up with seven thousand twenty. I was like, isn't a full-time job two thousand hours? Oh wait, but in Canada it's like sixty hours a, a year. That's a full-time job according to Trudeau. So like, you know, that's like almost a hundred years experience right there. That's I wish I knew hockey. That gets I could throw in some hockey jabs there too. Um, so the two social networks you're going to go through is uh, one that International Brotherhood of Boilermakers, Shipbuilders, Ironworkers, etc. Start now. Contact those guys. They're going to give you much more direct, uh, uh, not not so much advice. I mean, they're going to say, "Well, yeah, this is what the requirements are." But we got a buddy. Oh, we have a program. Oh, we got guys up there who are looking for these type of welders and they got some pull or they could file the paperwork or they could just wink wink nod nod all of a sudden you're, you may not be a high paid you know 
You're not going to be a welding supervisor, uh, but they're going to get you in. Uh, the other way is more uh, direct, uh, and that is where you get a network of people and buddies who like, yeah, we're working on this rig. We need a general laborer, but if you can weld too, that's awesome. Uh, Canadian, we're well, not Canadian. He was an American. And I looked into something similar to him. He wanted to go to Canada and work in the mines. Want well, to know how to go get a job? So I talked to a couple of buddies of mine, some of our Australian agents in the field, and they're like, "Dude, we know it's a risk. Have him fly to Sydney, take the train or bus or whatever out to Perth, go walk onto one of the mine mining operators, say, hey, I want a job." And he did that, and honest to God, he I think he was making like 80 grand a year like that. Now, it's going to be a long haul. I'm not saying go all the way up to Fort McMurray in the middle of January. But if you contact these people directly, you find the foreman, you, you get somebody, you make some calls. Don't go through the HR process. Don't talk to the HR lady over in Toronto. I see you have your friend. Go talk to the guys. Go talk to some fucking men working a real fucking job. Be like, yeah. We need a guy to do like these five things that have nothing to do with each other, but some of that might involve welding. If you could weld this, we'd really appreciate it. Come on in and we could start you at maybe $15, $20, $25 an hour. So I have some buddies up in uh, Calgary and Edmonton, and hopefully they'll see this and they'll just make the comments below. Hopefully some of you oil dudes uh, and welders <clears throat> uh, who may not have reached out to me before you just happened to watch the show, if you could put down some contact, uh, not contact, but some advice for him below, or hit me up at assholeconsulting.com. I can forward your advice and emails over to him. That's the kind of networking that you're going to get. That uh, that's going to probably hopefully land you a job. So you either go through the union, or you go through this network. Of which you develop more of a network when you inevitably get to Ontario. Uh, but even now, it's certainly starting with the union, and then maybe reaching out using my network, we can get you some contacts out there in, in Alberta. But yeah, man, I remember, same thing over here in the Bakken oil field. They would have taken anybody as long as you could pass a piss test, you know? Another thing they may want to think of is getting your CDL certification. I don't know what they call it in Canada, but you could drive semi-truck. Uh, that would get you into that same group of people where you, you're, um, that, that uh, network. So you're driving, you know, truck, you're hauling timber. And, and who knows, that might even, well, hang on, while we're here, why not let's just look at that up. Let's see what uh, truck drivers make over in Alberta. Uh, Alberta. Although you probably make even a lot more if you're going up north. That ice trucker stuff. <clears throat> truck driver jobs, Alberta. Alberta, $25 an hour. Let's try for McMurray. Narrow this down. Oh. 31, not bad, you know, and the certification would probably be a little bit less. Yeah, class three driver's license. I wonder what it is. It's like a Prince George, uh, British Columbia. I drove through there. There's a lot of timber going on. 25, yellow knife. Let's try that. NT, Northern Territories. Let's see what that's like. I'm only 22. But it, it it's another option for you to consider that may parlay lead you into <clears throat> that network making contests and network working for the same companies even uh, that welding uh, will get you into. Um, what else? So yeah, so that's it. Um, what I'll do is I'll email you all these links. When you're, I'll email you my buddy, I'll, I'll email my buddy your information um, and he'll contact you but since you're not going to be up there for a year, hell, any chance you can go up there now, do a little bit of part-time work? I think you got a full-time job. Maybe not. But the biggest hurdle out of all this, dude, is wifey poo going to be letting you go uh, and work this stuff. And you be the six weeks on, two weeks off guy. And that sucks. I, that sucks. I've seen it ruin many, many relationships. But you got to have a, a, a good come here and now conversation with your wife and saying, hey, when I go up there, it's only eighteen ninety seven an hour. And if you guys are minimalists, here's another, I mean... If you guys are minimalists, no kids, you just want to sit and relax, well then you don't have to go work in minus 63 degree, uh, degree weather over in northern Alberta. You could go find some local welding gig over in Ontario. Go, there's got to be, what is that on? 
What, what lake are you going? Erie or Ontario? You cut over from Detroit, and then that's... I think you guys are on Ontario. No, the difference, I think you're on Erie. Ontario is where the, in between those two is Niagara Falls. You're not that far in Buffalo. I could look it up, but I'm too lazy now. Um, but that's, that's what I would do is <clears throat> talk to the wife, say, what kind of life do we want here? Uh, because yes, uh, essentially $20 an hour out there. And you can certainly make more with certifications and specialized welding skills. It's going to take some time to learn that skill, though. Um, but yeah, you can you can make a fine living living in Kirchner, Ontario. Uh, you don't have to go out to uh, Prince George or wherever uh, and, and work the the winter shifts. Uh, but have a conversation with your wife because the money you paid me that that right there you want to talk about me you want to talk about getting a bang for your buck imagine if your wife divorces you because that now imagine how much your divorce costs and lawyer costs are going to cost compared to the price I right right that's the value so let's think about that talk to your wife or fiance now and um, and make sure that you're all on the same plan all right that's it you guys got question the old captain has answers at assholeconsulting.com uh, and that's it. I gotta, I gotta go get some food. We'll see you kids later. Toodles.